you know, a lot of dentists in the past looked at numbers like hope, like what's coming in, not what is in. And we're very reactive and we panic. So, so you're creating the anabolic dentist? <laughs> health is always the most important thing. The health of your business has to be number one before you do anything else. If it's not there, you don't have a business or you won't have it for long. And so the profit is a gauge of health, not your income. It's going to have to be very strategic, very systematic. Use this time now to even start to plan on what it's going to look like. I'm Mark Gaylord and I am here with Dr. Agatha Biss. And this is our second segment in the Leadership in the Times of Crisis uh, series that we've been putting out in, for obvious reasons right now. And uh, this is emotional mastery. And we are all in the same boat. We are all facing the same struggles. Rule number three is that you're gonna follow a specific schedule in terms of payments and debt uh, management. So you're not dealing with it every single day. You're gonna deal with it on a specific schedule. And the reason I say that, I'm gonna preempt it a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of dentists that I speak with, they have a tendency to, you know, if money comes in today or we had a good day, you know, and a bunch of bills came in, you just pay those, right? Because, oh, you know, I made more than Target, so let's just chip away at all this stuff. And we're very reactive. And then when we didn't bring enough, then we panic, and then we kind of leave people hanging for a long time and not pay them. So I want to take that out and basically put you on a system that allows you to look at the calendar and go, okay, today is bill payment day. This is how it's going to be paid. This is the, the system that is going to be paid through. And like, again, become a robot when it comes to doing that. You're only going to do it twice a month, which takes the stress away, right? Because you're not going to be doing it every day like we all do. You're going to do it once every two weeks. So, so you're creating the anabolic dentist? <laughs> <laughs> so am. I love that term. Creating, creating the anabolic dentist because the, the power isn't just in what you see, like you said, at the gym. The power is in the systems that go into it. The unseen yeah. you know, dedication that goes on daily, daily, that is extremely measured and precise. But yeah. I've got a feeling that that's what you're going to deliver on. And yeah. I got the analogy. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're going to like love this because you live your whole life like that. So you're just going to go, yeah, that totally makes sense, right? But yeah. a lot yeah. of us have bad about. memories of yams and chicken. <laughs> yams is right. And not half a yam, you know, three quarters of a yam, if I recall. Yeah. Okay, rule number four is, and we learned this through this crazy pandemic, is that health is always the most important thing. And so what I mean by that is, whether it's you or your family or your practice, the health of your business has to be number one before you do anything else. And how do you know if a business is healthy? I mean, what is the one thing that tells you that a business is healthy? Yeah, you've got profitability and you've got it's great buy for teams. Yeah, and it, you know, whether that profit is minuscule or that profit is giant, if it's not there, you don't have a business or you won't have it for long. And so what a lot of people forget is that, you know, they'll look at their P&L statement and they'll go, well, you know, was this a good year or a bad year? If you're not constantly putting profit in a separate little jar, then your practice is not healthy. And so what I want to do is make that, you know, it's rule number four, but it's really should be rule number one where Health is number one and communicating that to your team is critical. And I think, you know, one of the things I did with my team when I first implemented the system, we had a meeting and I kind of showed them the numbers and I basically said, look, we're too much here and not enough here. And this all needs to kind of restructure so that everything's balanced out. And I'm going to be showing you these numbers um, every couple of weeks. And then you're going to understand how I make decisions. So then you'll know why we either need to increase revenue or decrease spending or whatever else you can make decisions together and then the reality is is then your team understands your stresses they may not be able to help you or you know really truly get what you're going through as a business owner but they will actually know why you're making a specific decision based on the numbers um you're gonna break your money like this you're gonna look at uh, and you can do it really pretty or you can do it just on a notepad whatever but you're gonna record um, the revenue or the collections, I should say, at the end of each day. 
And so whatever is going in the bank, that's going to be revenues. The first thing that I want to make sure that you really get is that you have got to take care of that profit first. So whether it's a tiny minuscule percentage or a big one that you want to work towards, you are going to train yourself to put that away. Okay. So just like in bodybuilding, you got to have your protein a certain amount. Profit is number one. You've got to have it for your practice to be strong. So, you know, in a healthy practice, um, profit is around 10% from what I see in a lot of the financial statements. And I want to kind of talk to you, there's so much more to it. And I want to talk to you about this in a minute, but keep in mind that what I mean by profit is not the income of the dentist in the practice. So, so you're talking globally overall profit from the, the production of the global dentist. profit. So if okay. you're a dentist working in the business, if you're a dentist running the business, if you're a CEO, if you're, if you're managing, that does not come from profit. Anybody on, on, um, that works on the business, in the business, around the business comes from operating expenses. So again, if you, if you want to kind of discuss this more, um, reach out to us and let's chat about it. And we may, you know, depending on the, the comments we get from you guys, I may kind of delve into this a little bit deeper, but I just want to really stress that your salary, if you're a working dentist, will be coming from operating expenses, not the profit. The profit is a gauge of health, not your income. Okay. Got it. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, healthy practice should create around 10%. Um, many of you, many of us may not be there, especially when we first open up. So if you want to start really low numbers, like one or 2% or 3%, and just like, all I want to do is trickle some into the profit account so that I know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and taking care of my health first before I take care of everything else. So let's say that your revenue on your very first day open, I'm just gonna use like simple numbers so I can do the math in my head real quick. But let's say your revenue on that first day is $2,000, right? You brought in two grand. Um, so if you wanna chip away at my pace, you're gonna put away 200 into the profit account, right? Um, you could start with 20, you could even start with two, it doesn't matter. As long as you shift some money from your revenue into the profit, we're on a roll because you're going to increase it over time. The next thing you have to remember is at some point we all pay taxes, right? So you got to put some money out of the revenue into the taxes account. Now, depending on your structure, like, I mean, I'm basically using the round number of 15%. Um, again, pick your own number. You may not be paying taxes this year, depending on how, you know, your year goes and so on. But um, if you're looking at, 15%, then put 300 into the taxes column, right? But the next column on the chart that you're going to see is called owner or slash old debt, depending on um, whether or not you have a lot of stuff that's sort of lagging behind that you'd like to chip away at and you haven't been able to. Um, or maybe you have a bunch of different dentists that work together in a giant practice and you need to kind of like split your like shareholder profits, that is where this is going to come from. So you're going to put away, you know, 10, 15% um, into that column. So I'm, I've put in $200. So 10% of the revenue from that towards, since I'm a solo practitioner, uh, for me, it would probably go down to paying, you know, whatever that, you know, my scanner that I purchased or whatever that is still outstanding. Right. Uh, and the last and most important column is your operating expenses. So operating expenses in a healthy practice, and again, we're talking healthy, um, are around 65% of your total revenue. Now, 